Well, he's a name absolutely synonymous with the NBA, and we don't need really any flash introduction. Currently coaching the Clippers, of course. He coached the Cavs to a world championship in 2015-2016. Played on a Lakers side that included Shaquille and Kobe. Played with Michael Jordan at the Wizards and is now assistant coach for Team USA at the FIBA, FIBA World Cup alongside Steve Kerr and Eric Spolstra. After all of that, what a warm welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining us, Ty. No, thank you for having me. The expectations at this tournament, how much pressure is there on the U.S. to always win an event like this? Well, you know, our goal coming in is always to try to win the goal. Like, that's our main focus and um, try to qualify for the you know, 2024 over in Paris, you know, for the Olympics. And so our main focus is trying to win the gold. And, you know, obviously in 2019, you know, we played seven, so we didn't like that. And so we want to try to come back, get that taste out of our mouth and, and you know, go for the gold. Seventh. Wow, <laughs> that's unheard of, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's very unheard of. How important is this championship compared to an Olympic gold medal? Well, we know this is a tough tournament. You know, um, in basketball, like it's 32 teams, you know, of all the best teams in the world. You know, and so we understand that we're going to get everybody's best and everybody's best showings. And so the World Cup is important as far as a standalone tournament, you know, but but also as a qualifier for the Olympics. And so we understand how important it is, and we're very excited to be here. What's... And, you know, and then for me, like I said, we, we have a lot of coaches, and you know, a group of coaches, a group of players that are really locked in, and, you know, we're very happy to be representing the USA. And, um, you know, our players, like I said, are eager to get started, so I'm very excited to get started as well on Saturday. Yeah, that's against New Zealand, of course, our tall blacks. I'll ask you about that in a second. What kind of style do you want to play, and is that important to you? I think we want to be an up style, I mean, up tempo, um, fast paced team. You know, we got to get stops in transition. I mean, stops, get out in transition, rebound the basketball. And that's been, you know, one of our Achilles heels as far as teams crashing the boards and, you know, getting second chance opportunities. So if we can do a good job of playing good half court defense, get, get stops, rebound the basketball, we can get out in transition and really, you know, and really be a bonus for us and make, make the game a lot easier. Ty Lu on the platform with us. How does this coaching compare in this kind of event compared to the NBA? I know that there are certain different rules in the way it's played, but how do how do you look at it? Um, I think it tests our skills. You know, I think for me, you know, coming in different rules, different timeout situations. You know, you can knock the ball off the rim when it hits the rim, not be able to advance the ball, not be able to throw the ball in the backcourt. You know, I think the speed of the game because there's not a lot of timeouts. And just our players, like, getting used to the, the different style of basketball. So I think it tests our skills, you know, our basketball IQ, how fast we can pick up things because we only have three weeks together, really, before we start playing games. And so just how we got to fast track everything. And, um, you know, we kind of behind the eight ball, but we have room for a lot of improvement. So, like, the game is different, but it's nothing we shouldn't be able to adjust to. When you're coaching these these great players, and, and, and also, you know, when you're doing it in the NBA as well, they're already well established, and so it's not like you're teaching them, well, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, basketball skills. So what is your role that you see as a coach? Um, the biggest thing is just making sure we can come together as a team, like how we want to play, the style of play, how hard we have to play, and then learning the FIBA rules as well, you know, knowing that there are five things that we believe in the FIBA game that we have to win every single night. And so we prepare our guys for that. And then, like I said, their skill set is going to take over everything else, but making sure they understand the rules, understanding what gets you beat in FIBA basketball and what helps you win in FIBA basketball is very important. Putting on an, an, an American singlet, what does that do to these players? What have you noticed? Um, it means a lot. You know, I think being in different, uh, different countries and seeing other teams represent their countries and then you hearing the, you know, like I said, hearing the national anthem, it really puts you at peace. It puts, it makes you feel like you're at home, and um, it gets you up. And understanding that, you know, we wore in USA across our jerseys, and that we have to be prepared and go out and represent our country in the best way we can. Do you also feel that you're representing the NBA because that is the pinnacle of basketball? Yeah, I mean, NBA is a part of it, but I think when you put on a USA uniform, you represent the whole country, and so it's just more than basketball. Ty, the first game is up against New Zealand, our Tall Blacks. In 2002, just remarkable, we got through to the semi-finals of this tournament and we still talk about it. What do you know? And it does, you know, it's, and it's perfectly okay if you don't know too much about us, but what do you know about our team? 
Well, one thing I know, and I want to see, I want to see that dance before the game. So hopefully, so hopefully they, they do the dance. The hacker, it's cool. Um, yeah, the hacker. Mm. Yeah, we definitely want to see that. Um, then you know they got a great player, you know, a really good player in Delaney who plays three four. Um, you know, interchangeable can really score the basketball and do different things. Has a great knack offensively and defensively. They really play hard. Like they pick up full court. Um, they pressure you all throughout the course of the game and they shoot a lot of threes. And so if we're not prepared, like anything can happen, like, you know, so we got to be locked in because this team plays hard. They keep coming. They take a lot of threes and we just got to be, be prepared and master energy. Talk to me about your winning attitude. Do you approach every single game that you coach that we are winning this game? Yes, for sure. Like, when you step on the court, you know, in, in between those lines, you definitely think and feel you should win every game. And if not, then you shouldn't be a coach or you shouldn't be playing. And so that's my mindset, and that's the player's mindset that I want to have. Like, I want our players to feel the same way that I do. When we step in between the lines, we have a chance to win every single night. We know that basketball is a team game. This coaching for you is also a team coaching situation. What's it like working with Spoll and Kerr? Oh, it's been great. Just, you know, learning new things. Um, you know, they're, they're two of the best coaches in our league. And so having an opportunity to learn from these two guys has been great for me. Just watching how they prepare, uh, watching how they present, watching how they carry themselves during games, watching how they show video clips you know, all that. So things that I can learn and pick up. And like I said, they're older, older than me. They've been coaching a long time. And so just being able to pick up things from these guys and um, learn, you know, like it's just, it's just great to be in those rooms with those conversations, um, just hearing how they talk and speak and their basketball philosophy and their basketball mind has really helped and sharpened mine as well. You, you know, you're all in charge of your own teams, um, but you've got to all work together like this. Is there a, is there a boss man or is, or is it all kind of worked out in, in a kind of collaborative thing? No, I mean, Steve's the boss man for sure, you know, um, but he leans on me and Spo a lot to, you know, to help him out in any situation. And so whatever he needs us to do, um, we prepare it and we get it done, you know, but Steve's definitely in charge. He's the boss and, you know, we work for Steve and whatever Steve needs, we want to try to make his job, you know, the easiest we can make it, you know, because he has to coach the game. He has to do all the media, all the preparation. And so whatever we can do to help him and you know, ease his mind. That's a, that's what we're here for. I got a couple more questions, and then we'll let you go. And I thank you so much for your time. But it would be remiss of me, especially with all the NBA fans in New Zealand, not to ask you about that 2015-2016 season. I'm sure you get asked about it all the time. Is there a day that goes by without somebody doesn't mentioning it to you? Um, no. I mean, you know, it's talked about a lot, and you know, it, you know, the biggest thing is like. You know, people talk about, you know, the comeback and all that, but really it was just the mindset of our team. I think we had been through a lot the last couple of years, you know, the key, the year before that, and then that same year we had been through a lot. And so, you know, we were built for, you know, adversity. And so just having a mindset to understand, like, we got to take it, you know, not one game at a time, but one quarter at a time, you know, and just kind of win each quarter. That was our mindset, like coming out, let's win each quarter. And um, so I give a lot of credit, all the credit to our players and just having the mindset and the fortitude to just to push through because no team has ever come back down 3-1 and to have the fortitude to just keep fighting, keep clawing, knowing that this has never been done before. Everybody's counting you out in the world and then you stay the course and, you know, you win three games in a row. Um, it just tells a lot about it. it. just says a lot about our team and about the organization. It says a lot about you as well. Did you always have that belief at 1-3 down, like you're telling yourself that and as well as telling your team that? You know, I really believed it. You know, I thought, you know, the first two games, they really came in and they really beat us pretty bad. You know, 15, 20 points in both of those games we lost by. And then game three, we was able to win. And then game four, you know, we was up and then they made a good run at the end. But I just felt that we can beat them. And so we had to make a few adjustments. Um, I thought that really changed the series as far as how we wanted to guard them. And uh, once we changed those, you know, a couple of things and we tweaked those things, I thought for sure that like we, we could beat this team. And so they was a great team, the best team in NBA history. Steve Kerr did a phenomenal job. You know, Steph, I think, may have been MVP or whatever. But, like, we just knew that if we could change these couple of things and just showing our team, like, these are the cliffs. Like, these couple of plays we take away, we can win these games. And so just having, like, that and my mindset going into game five was like, we can win this series. And so that's the – that's the type of um, energy I had to project to my team. Is like, listen, I'm confident. I know we can win it. And they follow my lead. We were arguing today about what was the most important moment. Was it Kyrie's three or was it LeBron's block in that final game? 
It was both. I would say both. Uh, LeBron's block set up Kyrie's three. And so um, just going back and forth, I think it was a span of like three and a half minutes where neither team could score. And, um, you know, the game was tied, 89-89. LeBron gets the big block. And um, what was the 89-89 thing? LeBron gets the big block. And uh, we call a timeout because he was tired. He was exhausted. He played almost the whole game. He was exhausted. Kyrie was tired. So, you know, at that, that point in time, you know, I called a timeout. Let us sit down, um, collect our thoughts, you know, become calm, and then go on the court, court and the floor and execute. And so LeBron's block, you know, led up to Kyrie's three. This was one of the biggest shots in NBA history, especially in the game seven, you know, to take our team to, a, you know, put our team up three and having a chance to win that game. Tyler, I'll, I'll leave. I'll, I'll I'll leave you with this. You you played alongside Kobe and Shaq. You played alongside Michael Jordan, and I've got pictures in front of me where you're playing against AI. All of these great players. What can you tell us about those players? What makes them so much better than everyone else? For one, I think it's their mindset mixed with their work ethic. I like because they want to be the best. And so, just playing with Kobe, just seeing him get to the gym 5:30 in the morning um, before practice the last person to leave and then in the summertime when he's working out his his workout started at 5 a.m you know and so every year getting better at something like adding something to their game and then the way they worked on their bodies every single day the cold plunges the um the deep tissue massages um stretching every single day the weight lifting the training like everything that goes into it like they did it at a high level every single day like where some guys will do it twice a week, three, like these these guys did it every single day because they wanted to be the best. And so it's a mindset and the mentality, and their their mentality is what got them over the top. And so and you and you get inspired by that in terms of everything else about what you have done in your career. Yeah, I mean, you know, just playing alongside of Kobe, and you think as a young player when you come into the NBA or in college, you think you're working hard until you see guys that actually really work hard, you know. And so you never know, and so you get a chance to learn and grow and see these great players every single day. And you can learn and take it from, you know, you can take from these guys. And so that's what I've done. Like not only basketball, but in coaching, like I want to be the most prepared. I want to be the hardest working coach. I want to come into practice knowing that everything that I'm presenting today, that I, I know what I'm talking about. I know I'm sharp and the guys believe in what I'm teaching. And so, you know, no matter what you do in life, like you want to be the best. And so, just playing with Kobe, playing with Shaq, playing with Jordan, you know, coaching LeBron. Like I've seen these, I've seen these these same traits about how they approach every single day to be the best they can be. Can you pick one of those players and say that guy is better than everyone else? He is the, the goat in your mind. Do you have a name? I'm not gonna say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, like, I don't want you to get me in trouble. I don't want you to get me in trouble. <laughs> All right, we'll leave you with finally, then. Thank you so much for your time. Are you gonna win this tournament? Yes, that's our goal. Like our goal is to come in and win the tournament. We want to bring home the gold um, to the USA, and um, that's our main focus. So, um, yeah, we want to win the tournament, and that's why we're here. Or we shouldn't even come. We shouldn't have come if we didn't want to win the tournament. You've heard of Stephen Adams. He's a big hero to us. He's playing NBA, of course, and it's so popular down yes. here, this part of the world. And um, all the very best for the tournament. And I hope our Tall Blacks play a great game against you too, Ty. Thank you so much, mate. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.